the, the first comment that someone's gonna type in is, why does it cost so much more than the Surly? Hey there, everybody, we have a special treat today. We've got Adam Sklar from Sklar Bikes, and he has brought a super something uh, hand-delivered to review. And I thought I would take this opportunity to kind of nerd out about the bike. So how did the Super Something project come about? So the Super Something is the first production bike from Sklar, which if you haven't heard of Sklar, I've been building custom bikes in Bozeman, Montana for the last 10 years. That's been a really cool way to get to interact with the cycling world and get to learn, you know, get to talk to so many people about what they want through mm -hmm. building custom bikes. When you go through that lengthy process, really intimate process of asking people what they ride and where they want to go, you learn a lot about geometry and what people are looking for in general. Mm -hmm. So the super something came about because I was noticing a lot of people wanted similar stuff for their off-road <laughs> rigid bikes. Also just realizing that not everyone needs a custom bike really. Because those bikes were in demand, they took like, I had like a two year wait list for a long time and they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. And that was tough for me on a personal level and I just <laughs> wanted to make something more approachable that my friends could ride and so a, a bike for the people <laughs> exactly <laughs> so yeah. what are what are some of the similarities that you saw people request in the off-road bike that that come together here some things that we saw people come together on was sort of tire size and tire clearance like at first you know it was pretty crazy to fit a 40c tire in there <laughs> and then we wanted 2.6 inch tires and then we kind of settled back down in the like 42 to 2.1 inch range was what most people asked for right I mean, you've talked about like on the kind of road bike to mountain bike spectrum, mm -hmm. you get to place people exactly. But it seems like most people were a little bit more leaning on the road bike. Road bike to mountain bike, they're probably like 60% along the way, which is where I would describe this bike as. It's, it's not so stable and so right. fast that you're like on a super machine. Yeah. It still feels like riding a bike when you're a kid. Tell us a little bit about the geometry. It's built around 42C, 700 tires. It is designed more around a drop bar, Mm -hmm. but it works great with an alternative handlebar as well. <laughs> I mean, it's, I think it's pretty average, mm -hmm. which is what makes it great. Um, <laughs> it's not too much of, it's not too much of a road bike, not too much of a mountain bike. It's just fun for all around riding, I suppose. The, the first comment that someone's gonna type in is, why does it cost so much more than the Surly? Like what's, what's the, what are the differentiating features or points or construction things that, that make it cost a little bit more than the Surly? In building like the handmade custom bikes, my favorite thing to mess with was tubing selection. That makes the biggest difference on ride quality for a bike, in my opinion. I mean, that coupled with geometry. The biggest difference you're gonna see in this product versus something like a Surly or a lot of other production bikes is we spec super nice tubing all around. So it's like air hardened, double butted. The ride quality I've been super psyched with. It's way, I knew it was gonna be like pretty good. It's been a while since I've ridden production steel bikes, but it's so much better than I thought it was gonna be. And I thought it was gonna be good. You right. Like you build a bike out of nice stuff and you get a pretty nice bike. Which For those that may not know, like the air hardening process that adds strength and reduces weight or like what are the properties? You're able to use thinner tubes, okay. which flex nicer pretty yeah. much is what you get when the thinner you go, but you're able to maintain strength. So you're not gonna break your frame and that's kind of the line that you're riding with right. tubing selection is like, what's the best ride I can get away with without sacrificing durability. Um, I think one of the things that you're known for visually is like the, the, the swoopy top tube. Mm -hmm. Is that purely aesthetics? Does it, does it add something? Is it just like a, a, a visual signature? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of turned into a visual signature for sure. I always like that you could tell one of my bikes without paint on it was right. sort of the goal. <laughs> but originally I did it because they're ovalized too. and. Okay. For, for ride quality, I like that. You know, it's like a beam. It's flexes, flex more up and down and then stiffer in the steering access. Add some flex and I think it's nice to have a unique looking bike. And it's a lot of work to make a bike, so you might as well have it look cool yeah. in the process, I think. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the standard. So it's 142, 12 rear, 100 by 12 front, which it seems like the industry's settled on for the most part. The forks turned out really nice too. I love a good flexy fork. It makes you ride way more comfortable mm -hmm. and you have better traction. It's just better all around. They are compatible with a carbon fork. A lot of people want that. I prefer the ride of a steel fork, so I'm not offering that as an option. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I, we found flat mount to be super frustrating <laughs> and not work good. And people are gonna argue with that, but this is our bike and we're gonna make it how we want. So what's the issue with flat mounts? Is it like alignment becomes tougher? Yeah, it's just so sensitive if, if they're not faced exactly right. Okay. And then just the way you have to adjust those brakes, like from the bottom, ISO just works really good. Yeah. And 
if you have a brake like the clamper like this, like you get the short pull levers, the short pull brakes. And I have a set that has been on like six different bikes. <laughs> ISO works with pretty much everything yeah. post mount. And so it's nice for people who want to move nice parts around to different bikes. It looks like you, you have the mounting point, so it's meant to, to do stuff. It's mostly like a day ridey gravel bike, but set up for light touring, yeah. I would say. So not meant to like be an expedition bike where you might be carrying a ton of water through the desert or something. We've got the accoutrement for um, <laughs> front rack. You could run pretty much any front rack you like with a mid blade and a, drop, a mount at the dropout. And then same with the rear, the double, you can run pretty much any rack on that. I'm good. I just built one up to ride Tour Divide cool. this summer, so that's like a, maybe a little bit more than light touring, but it's it's ending up being a pretty capable bike for that stuff too. I think we have time to bring your Tour Divide build sure. and we can check that one out? Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. So this is your bike that you're setting up to do the uh, Tour Divide. Uh, how did you set this one up differently? This one, I normally ride a 58 centimeter frame, but this one I sized up to a 60 for a little bit more stable handling. Okay. So I'm going to run... I run like a 90 mil stem on the 58 and then this one, I have a 60, but I think I'm gonna end up with a 50 on there. Okay. And the crust towel racks. Those are really huge. <laughs> I love that part. It's so, it's so fun on this bike. Yeah. Um, I actually hadn't ridden it before, but the first ride, it just feels so, it just makes the bike feel so fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, doing a tiny chain ring. I'm gonna go even smaller to a, probably a 28 okay. with 11 speed rear. I was gonna build myself a fancy titanium frame right. and I drew the whole thing up. <laughs> and I thought just for fun, I'd see what the 60 would look like. And it was almost exactly the same thing. Oh, interesting. Okay. But I guess that's my brain doing that for me. We got 2.1 inch by 29 mm -hmm. with plenty of mud clearance for my liking. I built a rear rack this week that I'm going to do, put my Z-Rest on the back and then two dry bags on the back. And I'll okay. do, a, I think I'm going to do a front burrito. Sausage bag. Sausage bag. <laughs> yep. And, uh. Yeah, I'll do a head, just dynamo to power the headlamp. So you have a tie seat post. This is one you made? That's one I made. And I've been making those mostly just for customers of complete bikes. Titanium, flex, it's very flexy material, very springy. So you say you're going to go 28 in the front. Mm -hmm. uh, what's in, assuming something like 1150, 1152 in the rear? Just 42. Just 42, okay. <laughs> I'm stuck on 11 speed. <laughs> I was doing a lot of the ratio conversions for our customers. I probably should do that, but... I had an 11 speed setup, so gotcha. I'm also a part spin kind yeah. of guy. Well, we should get you a Uno shifter. <laughs> if you're right. We should, that would be, yeah, you can go test it out. There you go. I guess it's got the adjustable dropouts as a thing to mention. Yeah. I thought it'd be nice to make something like if someone wanted to buy it and build up single speed for a while and save up money for parts would be cool. Or in this case, like you slam the dropouts back and you have way more tire clearance. Officially, we say like a 2.1 yeah. by 29 or 2.3 by 27.5. How much adjustment is that? Is that like two centimeter? Or? I think it's two and a half centimeters. Two and a half centimeter. Okay. Who, who do you think is a good candidate for the Super Something? The Super Something is a great bike for someone who wants a very nice gravel bike, still is into metal bikes, a high quality metal bike, wants some versatility with tire sizes and drivetrain options right. and handlebar setup. I mean, my idea when I built it was really a 700 by 40 to 50 ish drop bar bike yeah. that in five years when you're bored of it, you put a flat bar on and it's your town bike or let your friend ride it when they're in town or right. just a bike, you'll, a frame that's really fun and you'll keep it forever and set it up different ways. Cool. Uh, we didn't talk pricing. Um, are you doing completes or just frame sets? No completes, just frame sets for now. Yeah. What does a frame set cost? $15.99. $15.99. That's, that's so much more than the Surly. <laughs> <laughs> Way more than a Surly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can't compete with them. Right. They can't compete with us either. So. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Adam, for, for joining us on the, the channel. Be sure to subscribe for a more in-depth review on the Super Sun. Yeah, it'll be interesting to, to, to see how it rides compared to the other alt-bar bikes I've been reviewing. If you like this content, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and keep the supple side down.